you know, this video, I think is going to be interesting. I'll be interested to see how you guys do with this because I think I'm going to spend quite a bit of time today just going through different charts and examples. And traditionally, I try to chisel my videos into 15, 10 minute clips. But what I find is most of the time people really start to understand a repetition. They sit down, they have time. And so today that's sort of the strategy is to show you guys many, many opportunities in the markets, good and bad, winners and losers, to really explain the different things that go on in my head when I see these sort of opportunities. And remember to start, this is all based off of our indicator. This is not some indicator game if you're seeing this for the first time. This is not some sort of magic pill. This is not some sort of charged for piece of software. This is free. It's down in the description. You can just fill out the form to get access. And then I add it to you. Once I've added it to you, if you come up here to invite only scripts, you should see it show up under Patrick Asian session script, unless I change the name of it. As long as the author's my trading view account, you'll be good to go. Um, there's plenty of videos on my channel as well in the description on setting up the standard settings of this indicator, which do need to be changed, such as the stop loss buffer. I change a lot of the colors, things like that. Um, but today is really about identifying opportunities because one thing that's special about this indicator is the fact that it does have predetermined entry level stop loss targets and break even. So what that allows us to do is quite literally go to the strategy tester and I can back test and show you the exact result if you had followed every single trade every single time for whether it's three days, three years, doesn't matter, 30 years. I can show you the back test to whenever the chart allows me to. And the good thing about that is it provides people some transparency of, you know, certain charts work much better than other charts. But I never want people to take this software and rely on it in terms of they just see a trade like right here, they see an entry and they just buy. That's not what the point is. The point is to learn how to manipulate the chart, how to read the chart, and discuss inside of your own mind if I'm going to actually enter a trade. Uh, this is an example of a trade that's technically per se, quote unquote, with the indicator still open. It's here on UZAR. And I wanted to start with this chart because it encompasses a lot of different elements that are really important to understand with this strategy and this indicator. Now, by default, this indicator is meant to be very simple. Once you see that long arrow, you should trust that, um, uh, and you can run the back test on this, but you should trust that it will have at least a profitable outcome for the majority of the time. There are certain circumstances and pairs where I can run a strategy tester and it's actually a, uh, a losing, it's a losing game. So understand that generally speaking, you know, you should be able to go in and trust these things, but there are so many ways for us to increase our win ratio with these things. So I want to start today by discussing this chart here. Let's start by uh, doing something that I don't talk about too much, which is identifying the Asian range, which is in the blue. Once you guys load this up, you guys are going to see that Asian session highlighted in blue, as long as you don't change that setting. And one thing that I like to do from time to time is identify the high and the low of that session. So you can see the highest point of the session was right here. And the lowest point of the session, notice this candle was in the green session. So that means that this was the lowest point using the wick, of course, in the uh, Asian session. And so when I look at that, that identifies the session. Now, obviously, you know, we call it the Patrick session strategy because frankly, I don't have a name for it. I don't have some fancy dancy name like everybody else seems to name all their strategies and things to try to make you think it's the greatest. So it's called the Patrick session strategy. But um, let's just call it what it is. This is a trend finder and it's trying to find extremes in the market with trend. How it does that is by identifying and looking at EMAs to find the trend and then directional biases with Asian range and RSI to find extremes. So in essence of this, when it looks at a trade, it identifies by looking at this Asian range, 
in between these lines here, that blue shaded region, it asks itself, is the aqua the bottom or the top? If the aqua is at the top, that's an uptrend. And it has to be aqua, gray, blue in that order. If it's aqua, blue, gray in that order, then it doesn't do anything. But in this case, notice you have aqua, gray, blue. So that means in this case, we're looking at a bullish sentiment. And the market, mind you, just changed. Notice we had aqua above gray here, but notice it was blue, aqua, gray. So that's why there was no trade called in this session because it wasn't in the order that we want. We wanna see aqua, gray, blue in this blue session. And in this case, we do have that. The second thing is once we understand that, we understand that that means this is what we would call a bullish market. An uptrend means the market's going up. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to buy dips. So if you have a market that's going up like this, you're trying to buy in those opportunities. That is this opportunity. This is that dip. That's what we're trying to identify. And that's what the indicator does for you. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting, but with some extra effort from your own element, your own brain, you can increase win rate, decrease your pain, if you will. So when I look at this, obviously everything's playing out well right now in terms of this position. Uh, it's working towards the top of the gray box, which is the break even point. It's working towards the top of the target, of course, always at a one to two risk to ratio. It puts its stops below the low here when it decides to enter. But there's several different things that I look at. Some are confirmations, others are just something to look at and note that I think are important to understand. Um, the first of which is the location of the EMAs. So this isn't happening in this example, but there's certain circumstances and I'm sure that in today's video, however long I decide to go, maybe we'll see some times where this happens, but in certain circumstances, the aqua line will actually cross below the gray or the blue line in the green session before an entry presents itself. What you want to do is you want to get in the habit of when an entry presents itself, such as right here on this candle, you want to ask yourself, is the aqua gray blue in that order? Now, if you're bullish, again, the aqua is going to be on top. Gray is going to be in the middle. Blue is going to be on bottom. Gray is always in the middle. And if you're bearish, aqua is on bottom. Gray is in the middle. Blue is on top. So in this case, aqua is on top. Gray is in the middle. Blue is on bottom. That's, of course, a bullish market. And when you notice that in the London session, you still have aqua gray blue at time of entry. That's like a very minuscule thing, but that, that's like your first uh, check confirmation. You're, you're wanting to make sure that the aqua, the gray, and the blue are still in that order at the time that you enter the trade. Because if they have crossed at the time you've entered the trade, what it's telling you is that on a higher time frame, you're getting lower EMA shifts. Keep in mind that the 50 EMA and 200 EMA are simply the 5 and the 13 on higher time frame. That's all this is. So that's telling you that the trend is threatening to shift on a higher time frame. And of course, if the trend is threatening to sh uh, shift on a higher time frame, that would mean it's if, if this was crossing aqua below gray, that would mean it's threatening to shift to the downside, meaning it's threatening to create a seller's market. And you don't want to be buying into a seller's market. Now, of course, that's easy, but that's the first thing that I look at. In this case, notice that the aqua's above the gray, above the blue. Now, the second thing that I want to look for, and I like, and again, this is not like something that makes or breaks a trade, this next part. It's just extra confirmation. How much validity do you want? Because remember, Trading is just a game of probabilities. I know for one thing is that these trades are going to win and lose, and it's the ding-dongs out there that are con consistently chasing something that wins every time, which doesn't exist, that'll end up losing money. You got to recognize that if you have a high enough risk to ratio, like a one to two, and you grab a coin and just flip it at random, that's really what trading is about. It's about that random result. But if that result has what's called an edge, and I've learned this, of course, from Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, that book is phenomenal if you haven't read it. 
if you have that edge in the market, statistical probability that you're going to try to win doesn't have to be more than you lose, but 40%, 50%, hopefully, then you have the edge. You know all you got to do is just sift through it. The second part of this edge is your EMA location. Now, there's going to be better examples than this one, but this is still a good example. Your EMA location is something that can help you define an edge. And really what it's doing is it's helping you define if the market, how, how, how big of a chance does the market have to pull back? So when you look at this, this is entry area. And that's annotated by that little blue triangle there that's sideways. That's your entry area. And when you look at that entry area, look where your stop loss is. Now, for those of you that don't know, the 800 EMA is a major level of support or resistance, depending on where the market's at. In this case, notice market comes down. It acts as a level of support. You see that, how it bounces? The market came down and around the area. Now, it's not like supply demand or it's not like an imbalance or something of that nature it's not this pinpointed to the pip zone it's almost like a zone you got to think around the ema is where that action occurs around the ema is where that support or resistance occurs so in this case notice where your stop is that's pretty cool isn't it because that would mean that the market would need to come back down and bust through that EMA in order to hit your stop loss. You got to think about that as a layer of protection. Now there's going to be a majority of your trades. It's not going to happen like this. The 800 EMA or the blue EMA is going to be maybe down into here. And so you're going to say, okay, if the market pullback, it's going to hit my stop loss before the EMA. And you have to recognize that. What I'm trying to show you is different looks. This is you recognizing there's more protection there. Okay, so we'll, we'll go through that example again on a different chart because I don't want to just stare at the same chart all day, but I'm just showing you some different looks. What do I look at? How do I identify it? Now, another thing that I like to recognize is the Asian range. Every session creates this sort of support and resistance area. Up here at the top, we'll call that resistance. Down here, we'll call that support. And I could do this every day if I wanted to. If I came over here, there's the high. If I came over here, there's the low. By the way, hello, you see what I'm seeing? Low of that session, low of here. So things repeat themselves, but that's neither here nor there right now. The point is, when we look at this, I'm going to delete these ones. When we look at this, you also want to recognize this session, support and resistance. You're always going to be outside of that because you're finding an extreme. Remember, the RSI comes into play here too. You're finding an extreme in the opposite direction of trend. This is, in this case, we're in an uptrend market. We have an extreme in the opposite direction, which is a downtrend. So that means that you had, in this case, a break in what was at this level creating support. This broke, it came down. Notice what happens right there. What happens? Right here, we rejected, 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 and then it broke above. Now, this is interesting because lots of people are trying to understand how to scale into opportunities, and there's two things to say here. If at first you notice that this gets rejected, followed by multiple bearish candles, that's telling you something. That's telling you that the sellers are here. Didn't happen in this case, but that's telling you that sellers are here and you ought to be careful. Maybe you wanna look at mitigating your risk, reducing your risk, reducing position size, something. 
On the flip side, this one is just one big wick. You get one bearish candle, bullish, bullish, small bearish candle, but more indecision, bullish breakthrough. After that, that's your sigh of relief. When that happens, that's your sigh of relief. You're saying, okay, we broke through, it retests, and then it continues higher. So what you're going to want to get in the habit of doing is identifying this. It's going to help you to understand mid-trade your probability. How are you feeling? How is it going? I want to jump over here really quick. So check this out. This is another example of a trade. This one was a loser. Okay. So I'm going to identify the bottom. Whew, look at that. We'll talk about it. I'm going to identify the bottom of the Asian range. And then I'm going to identify the top. Okay. Now check this out. Let's start thinking about all the things we just learned a minute ago. This is an AGB in the opposite direction. By the time you enter this trade is aqua, gray, blue in that order. Now there's a lot going on here. I promise I'm not trying to be like one of those memes on the internet with a bunch of lines. Aqua, gray, blue. You got them in that order. Now this one you'll notice what's the major difference with the blue. Your stop loss level is right here, okay? Your blue's right there. That means the market would have to come where? Break your stop loss, which it did, in order to get to the blue, which it did. Again, that's important to remember because what we just learned a minute ago was if we're trying to create higher probability scenarios, the blue is within our stop loss box. Simply looking at the box and saying, is the blue in that box? Yes or no? And the answer in this case is no. So that means the blue isn't helping us. I'm not saying it means you can't take the trade. I'm saying that's something that needs to be in the back of your mind immediately. Now, the second thing we do that's really interesting is look at the Asian range. I mark the bottom of the Asian range. Again, think about it like this. For those of you guys that are newer to markups, there's the beginning of the Asian range and the end. All I'm doing is looking at this blue shaded region. And when I do that, what's the lowest point? Well, it's right here. What's the highest point? Well, it's literally that one. It was in an uptrend. It's that one. Now look at this. The market comes up. It support, 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 breaks through. Okay. When it breaks through that area, what happens? There's an entry signal, okay? Let's forget about the blue for a minute. Let's say you enter. You enter, good. Everything's set up. Pretend you just follow along. Now, I'm gonna do a replay here so you can see what I mean. As this develops, let me slow this down. What am I looking at? Again, I'm looking at the two pink lines, which are the Asian range. I want to make sure that I don't see something that's alarming to me. That the market's going to be rejecting and going the opposite direction due to the session. Due to the Asian session. So as I watch this, enter. I don't care that I'm immediately in drawdown. That doesn't really bother me. I get more bearish action. Market starts pushing down. In fact, at this time, I'm feeling pretty good. Market touches this level right there okay keep watching remember we make decisions on candle close i don't make decisions during a candle so now that the candles start to close i notice i've got a bullish candle hmm interesting two bullish candles off of this low that tells me that this area is now getting that support that we should be nervous about. That's getting support. And in that case, this is where you can start to warn yourself and say, hmm, 
I don't know that we're going to get the breakthrough to the bottom side. Because remember, one bullish candle is one thing, but you get those two bullish candles after touching this layer. That's a whole different story. Market goes bearish a little bit. Then it comes back up and wicks. Closes bullish. And look what happens. It just keeps chugging along. Your goal is to start to identify when that happens. Not that you can identify it before the entry. Of course you can't. You have to get good at identifying this real time. The difference between when that happens. Turn off my replay mode. The difference between when that happens and the difference between when this happens. Because again, on this one, you wick to it. And almost every time, without question, you're going to wick to these layers and these levels. But the problem is, when you start to see the bearish action in the opposite direction, what that's enabling you to do is, in this case, if you had entered, let's say, a short position here, right, at entry, you had your stops at suggested stop, you had your target, target doesn't really matter in this case when I'm explaining the risk side, but you would have had a one to two risk reward ratio, of course. Once you saw those two bullish candles, what would have happened? You would have exited. So now, in this case, you've risked substantially less than the original amount. Now you're down to about a half of a percent risk versus 2% risk, maybe even a little bit less. Let's get back to a more standard pair, let's say Euro dollar. Again, this is all at random today. And all I'm doing is scrolling back and looking for opportunities. Win, lose, I don't care. So we have AGB. What you guys would probably notice in this case on this losing trade is what? Not only is the blue not in the stop loss realm, the gray isn't either. Now listen, I will take trades when the blue isn't because it'll happen more, more times than not. But when the gray isn't, we start to really diminish our chances. That's okay, but you start to really diminish your chances. So let's look at this. We already noticed that, but let's get into our Asian range. Bottom. Right about there, top. Now in this case, honestly, nothing was messed with. We stayed inside of that range. This was the fake out move. That's the move we're looking for, right? The unfortunate part, we were looking to sell. It just happened later. It's funny, I had a student, I think Michael's his name. He said, what's funny about this indicator is when it wins, it wins. When it loses, look for the next spike, take it again. And I thought that was hilarious because more times than not, when you have a scenario like this on a loser, the next time the market pushes again, RSI over, and then it shifts again, is generally the winning trade. It's, it's funny how that works. But in this case, again, you don't have that protection. Gray, aqua, they're really spread out, which is, again, fine, but you've got to be aware of it. In this case, had you looked at it, market doesn't get back down to the bottom here. Comes up to the top, but that's where your high was, so you get stopped, and then it rolls. The trade you're actually looking for was right there. Now, what's the difference, you might ask, between what I just showed you and the two charts before this? It's that we never got out of the Asian range. Getting out of the Asian range is generally what will, what will initiate the better trades. If you're starting to pick up on this. Now, listen. 
Most people won't make it this far. That's why you're getting this. Whoever's listening to this, you're getting the information because you're definitely into this. So you say, okay, how could I have started to identify this trade losing? Look at the Asian range. The entry happened inside of the range. More times than not, the Asian range is the most consolidated area. You don't want to enter a trade inside of the range. Now, you can enter a trade inside of the range. You want to see price exit the range, and then you can enter. Let's look at this example. Just scrolling back. Again, all at random. Now, this example is better. Why? It's not perfect, but it's better. Why? Because the gray is inside of your stop loss. If the market were to pull back, which this one actually did end up hitting TP, just barely. But notice the market pulled back. Look what happened. Gray. Kept going. So had you had your settings at, say, not moving to break even, one to three. I'm just showing you an example. Look at that. Still one at a one to three. Again, just an example. Now let's go back to the standard settings, which is a move to break even at one to one, target one to two. Now, when we look at this, let's mark the top and the bottom. Now, do you see the difference between this and this? This, and don't get confused by these top lines for a minute, this is your Asian range here. Look what happens. We enter in the range. The market literally hasn't made its move yet. Since the market hasn't made its move yet, you're going to get stuck maybe in the right direction. Probably not. Because generally we're with the trend. And so it's going to try to fake traders the wrong way before going the right way. This case, here's the high. Market pulls in in London, immediately fakes this way. Why? Who has buy, uh, buy stops sitting here? So many people. They have their buy stop orders. And the moment that the market breaks out, they buy. That's when we sell. Stops at the high. Because if the market goes higher than that again, what, what did I just mention? Generally speaking, the market, if you lose a trade and you're following along, the next time is actually the move. Again, a lot of nuggets layered in here. Might have to watch it a few times to pick up on it. So in this case, look what happens. You beat the high of the Asian range. Beat it. Shift. Stops at high. Rolling to the downside. Notice. Look what happened here. Bottom of Asian range provides support. Now luckily, barely target gets hit. That was not based off this liquidity area. No, it wasn't. That was based off a of 1 to 2 had nothing to do with the fact that there was buyers sitting here and here, which would probably mean that buyers would be sitting there again. Nothing to do with that. It was just a one to two, but it just got lucky in that case. But now do you notice the difference? And you can start to see these things. Let's go to dollar yen. By the way, if you're still here and it's helping, please leave a like, leave a comment something to let me know that you like videos like this. All right, let's look at this one. Again, you're noticing now that this is all at random. I'm just finding opportunities, addressing them. So I'm going to just address the range first. Good. There's our range. Now, obviously, you guys are starting to get into the thick of things now. You're starting to understand it. So I'm sure you can see that we're out of the range. That's good. I'm sure you also notice, on the other hand, though, that the 800 EMA is nowhere to be found in terms of your stop loss relativity. So that does take this thing down a notch. Again, no fancy names. It is what it is. Now, in this case, Notice what happens. 
entry here. As I mentioned, what did I mention? You gotta watch this layer. It wicks, but you don't get a bunch of bearish candles, do you? No, indecision, it just boom, breaks through. Now this isn't a perfect trade and that's fine. The market comes up, one to one risk to road ratio. Stops are moved right here to break even. That's why the red ends here and moves up because stops are moved to break even and the trade gets stopped out. It never gets back up to that area and look what happens. The trend shifts, but that's okay. You got out at break even in that case, but the trend shifted. Let's keep it moving. Here's another example. Again, identify the, the high, identify the low. Now this one's interesting. This is, I think the first scenario where you've seen a trade that is one, not exit the pink lines, AKA the actual range from that Asian range. So yes, it does happen. Notice how well placed the 200 EMA is, the gray, meaning the market would have had to pull back to hit your stop loss. It would have had to break the 200 to hit your stop loss. Break evens up here near top, target hit up here. Good. Now, would you have taken this now, knowing what you know? Maybe, maybe not. because the bottom was planted in Asia. Okay. And then the trend continued. Remember the trend was up. That's the good thing. See, here's where traders that learn market maker method, manipulation, whatever, God forbid I mention these things. When traders learn that, the problem is they think every break is manipulation. It's only certain ones. Generally, if you're with the trend, you're going to be okay. So in that case, you would see and you'd be like, well, Patrick, we broke the high. Isn't this the, didn't you just mention? Yeah, I did. I did just mention about the buy stops with trend. This is, look at this. This is with trend. You wouldn't sell this. That's actually why our algorithm is exiting. You wouldn't sell it. Why? Because you're with trend. Aqua, gray, blue's way down here, which means that this has been trending very hard to the upside. Okay, here's another one. Just as another example. Asian range high. And Asian range low. Take a look at that. With trend, what does it do? Slams to the bottom side. That right there, my friends, manipulation. Which, by the way, these wicks, geez, getting through this is crazy. You can tell there's a lot of liquidity right here. Again and again and again and again, they kept hitting, 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 hitting. This one got stopped at break even. Just about hit target. And then that wick comes out of nowhere and slams this area one more time. Again, look at this area. When you look at right there, look at that, right around Asian, the bottom of Asian range. That's where it's at. It snaps it, it breaks it, snaps back, snaps back, snaps back, keeps going. A lot of manipulation occurring in here. But the good news is in this case, again, is understanding you're breaking the bottom, you're entering on the upside. You're breaking the bottom, you're entering, you're with trend. Now, of course, unfortunately, this one didn't have as good of an outcome in terms of the result. This one also, 200 EMA wasn't inside of the stop loss. Now, again, guys, I could do this all day long. I could scroll down to gold. Doesn't really matter. That part's easy. And over and over and over again, you guys can now start to get used to looking at these 
identifying and figuring out whether or not you want to take one. Again, here's another one. There's two winners in a row here, but let's look at this one. Look at the low of the range. Look at the high. What's the trend? It's down. Aqua, gray. Blue's way up here. That's okay. You got gray inside a stop loss. That's enough. We slam to the top of the Asian range, meaning go to the upside in the opposite direction of the trend. Everybody buying this breakout is in profit. They're feeling good. Boom, slams back down. By the way, telltale sign of who's in control. Look at all these little, little choppy blues. Little choppy, little choppy. Boom, boom. Sellers come back in. They say, we're in control. You're in with the sellers, not the buyers. This case, market stops break even. Of course, based off of the settings, then you guys can back test the settings you like. But stop is good. Move stops. One to one risk road ratio in that case is hit. Move stops. These are the things that you got to start looking at. These are the type of trades that we need to start really focusing on because when you start to add these things together, you start to get an understanding of the markets a little bit deeper. And now you stop relying on the indicator to just tell you when and where to enter, but you use the indicator as the helper, which it's designed to do to help you identify opportunities. So there's a lot in this video. Watch this thing over and over and over again. Leave a like if, if you enjoyed a little bit of a different type of video. See how you guys like it. Let me know. Leave me feedback in the comments. We'll see you on the next one.